Hello, everybody. I hope you are safe and well. My name is Sanjay Swami, and I'm the co-founder of Martech Vibe. Today, we have with us a very special guest who's going to talk to us about data virtualization. Joining us today is Olivia Tiju, regional VP EMEA and Russia at Dinodo. Dinodo is the leader in data virtualization, providing agile, high-performance data integration, data abstraction, real-time data services across the broadest range of enterprise, cloud, big data, and unstructured data sources at half the cost of traditional approaches. Olivia, thank you so much for taking the time out today and joining us. I want to begin this interview by asking you, what is data virtualization and why is it so important? Yeah, uh, thank you, Sanjay, for the introduction. So I'm very glad to be here today and to respond to your question. So uh, before answering your question about data virtualization, I mean, um, I, I, will, I will tell you about why we are coming into, into the picture today. And um, I will start by uh, describing what's happening in the data landscape in most of our uh, customers um, in Europe, in the US, in, in, in Africa now, uh, and in Asia. So basically, uh, what happened over the last, I would say, uh, decade was uh, we, we're coming from a world where the data was uh, managed and stored in like typical you know, databases, then came the, the data warehouse, uh, um, in a solution with some replication beforehand and afterhand with the notion of you know um, uh, data mart. Then came the, the wave of big data with uh, the implementation of uh, data lake in a lot of organization. Okay, and uh, but the thing is um, there was a lot of promise you know in the data warehousing and then uh, with the data lake that was okay. Let's try to put all the data in the same place. Okay. Um, and once we have all the data in the same place, then we're going to be, you know, very, um, it's going to be easy to, to distribute the data to the business who needs more and more data for the digital transformation. Okay. So that was the idea. And at the end of the day, what happened is um, the big data technology is, is fine for a lot of use case, but it didn't replace the previous, you know, data storage or applications. And you still have, you know, you have data lakes, but you still have um, a data warehouse and you still have like legacy databases. You still have some data in SAP and so on and so on. Okay. Um, moreover, what we see now, the trend is, um, I mean, the big data web is a little bit declining and now uh, everyone's saying, okay, let's put all the data in the cloud. It's going to be much easier. Um, and what's happening is that there is again this promise that, okay, uh, let's try to put all the data in the cloud. Okay. But at the end of the day, the data is spread over all these different um, technology. Uh, none of them has replaced the previous one. And, and the, the, the situation, I mean, I mean uh, has like three, three main challenges. Okay, the so first thing is for the chief data officer, for the data office, it's a nightmare because um, the data is spread in all those technology, you know, on-prem, in the cloud, big data or data or whatever. It is very challenging to, to do some uh, governance of this data, to, to, to establish who can consume which data in the organization and to, to do the traceability. Okay, this is the first one. And this is a nightmare of the CDO. The second is a nightmare of the CIO, the head of IT, who, um, I mean, the, the thing is that data has been replicated over time, um, over and over again. And now uh, there, are, there are huge challenges on integrating this data between all those technology. Uh, into the data lake and now into the cloud and, and without, um, I mean, uh, replacing the data warehouse and so on and so on. And it, it's, it's a nightmare for, for those guys to, to integrate that. Um, it, it costs a lot of uh, money and, and has a lot of delay. Okay, and at the end of the day, the, what, what we see as a, the time to data, so the time to deliver the data to the business is, is usually very long, too long. Like we're talking about weeks, sometimes months to deliver some new data set to the business, which is, you know, uh, unacceptable. And the, the, the last thing, the challenge is on the, on the business side, where the guys say, come on, we, we cannot, you know, wait for months to get the data. We need it much more uh, fast. Um, and we need fresh data. We, we don't want to have some data that has been replicated over time, several times. And then, you know, at the end of the day, uh, my data is too, is, is not relevant anymore because it's too old. Okay. And this is where, we can play into the picture because um, the approach we have with data virtualization is to connect to all those different sources, okay, the old one, the new one, uh, and so on, 
and to make the data available without replication, okay? Um, so that the CDO can really manage in real time who can access which data, so that the CIO can really deliver the data much faster, and at the end of the day, the business can get the data they want and the very fresh data. So this is the concept of data virtualization. You can see it as a kind of a ultimate enterprise databases without the storage, okay? The storage is being delegated to, to the different sources, okay? Right. And, and when we talk of data virtualization and then we're talking about data, so, you know, my lead up to the to your answer is, or my lead up question is, how can data virtualization help A, organizations in making most of their big data? And B, how can it help organizations improve their data strategies? Okay. Uh, so the, um, the thing is, uh, companies, you know, organizations, so private company or uh, I mean the state-owned company and, and, and administration, they have invested a lot in, you know, all those technology and in data lakes and, and now moving to the cloud and so on. Uh, but the value to the business usually is quite limited. So the thing is putting data virtualization on top of that is a way to get the value from those uh, reservoirs, uh, to combine the data from one reservoir with another um, uh, without replication. So uh, it's a way really to take advantage of all the investment that have been done and make it much more agile, okay? So deliver the data in, in, in a couple of days instead of weeks or months, okay? Um, so um, it, it's, it's a way to really provide this agility which is, which is missing. And the second thing is uh, also uh, to, uh, to get control back to the, I would say, the security and the governance of the data in real time, okay? Uh, you, you, the, the CDO and the CIO, they need to take control back to this data which is spread in different technologies, which make it very complex to really um, control who can do what and, and then to trace who, who has done what, okay? So at the end of the day, I think that authorization on top of the ecosystem which is in place is a way to take much, much faster advantage of, it, of what you have invested in. And it's also a way to, to, to take control back to, to the security and, and, um, and, 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 and the governance, okay? So it becomes a kind of uh, a booster to your data strategy so that the CDO can really deliver his mission. The CIO can really focus on his strategy and, and optimize the cost of the different technology uh, underneath. And it's a way really to deliver uh, much faster to the business who, is, who, will, who needs more and more data and, and fresh data. Great. Would you say there is a difference between data virtualization and data federation tools? How would you differentiate them? Okay. That's a good question. Um, uh, I would say data federation is a kind of uh, the previous, you know, uh, uh, way to name it, okay? Uh, data virtualization uh, can do some kind of federation, but it does much more things, okay? It's a way, for example, to, um, to expose the data, whatever it's for BI or data science uh, reporting purpose, or to expose the data as an API. So if you want to, to do a data as a service, I mean, the same virtual data set can be exposed through ODBC, so to be consumed by uh, whatever it's a uh, Tableau, Click, uh, uh, kind of uh, I mean, a visualization tool. And on the other side, to expose this, you know, through API to API management still uh, and so on, okay? So uh, wh when you, when you uh, use data virtualization, you, you can do much more than uh, purely, you know, federation. It has a lot of functionality. For example, there is a data catalog, which is part of the, of, of the platform, which is a way to really search for the data that you need, okay? And once you have identified some data with this catalog, you'll be able to consume the data, so to make query out of it. So uh, all those kind of, you know, uh, feature plus the traceability, so you'll be able to do some lineage to see uh, where the data comes from and so on and so on. All, so you have a much broader scope of, you know, feature um, uh, with, a, with a virtualization. Right. And can you give me, a, you know, a couple of uh, use cases of data virtualization? Okay. Uh, so basically, um, the data virtualization is usually, uh, I mean, our customer now, more and more, they are identified this data virtualization as a new, um, a new component in the data architecture, okay, that is becoming, you know, 
it used to be maybe nice to have like five or eight years ago, but now it's a must have because you need this component on top of your sources on, on your, in, in your ecosystem yeah. to, to provide this agility to uh, all, all that kind of stuff. And our customer, they say, okay, uh, we like the concept, we test it, uh, we, we, we are ready to put it in the uh, target architecture in terms of uh, data. Now we need to start with some use case where we can deliver the value very fast. Okay, so let's take some painful, you know, uh, uh, use case where if I use a traditional way, which is like replication uh, over and over again, um, it's gonna take too much time or it's gonna take too much money, okay? So let's try with data authorization on this particular use case. So example, in the banking industry, um, we, we have a lot of use cases around you know, compliance where you need for uh, regulatory, I mean, for, for compliance reason, you need to provide some report you know, to the authority uh, with some deadlines, okay? So in, for a big insurance company or big banks, they, they need to get to gather this data uh, to provide those reports. And if you use it the, the traditional way, it may take you know uh, months uh, to provide. So with data visualization, you can do it very fast. Okay, wherever the data is, is spread over, and um, that's the kind of use case where our customer will, will use. Okay. Uh, second kind of use case is how to um, to to have the you know traditional BI you know much much uh, self service and much um, uh, agile. Okay. Um, so our customers, they will introduce the data visualization to, to make this data, you know, um, uh, available for, for the reporting, okay? And we have this notion of virtual data warehouse, okay? Or virtual data lake, okay? So you decouple actually the consumption of the data from, you know, the, where the data is physically stored, okay? And that's, um, that's a big category of use case. So a lot of customers, they're going to, you know, uh, uh, virtual data warehouse, uh, on top of what they already have. Uh, another category of use case is um, about putting in place, you know, uh, uh, data as a service strategy. So how to be very agile in exposing data set uh, inside the organization or outside of the organization, okay? Um, it's all about uh, to make your data as an API much faster. So this is also, you know, if you want to data as a service, open data, it's, it's one category of use case as well. And finally, um, we have a big driver uh, as a use case uh, when it comes to um, uh, security and governance, meaning that um, uh, to, to take control back to how you expose the data, who can use which data and how to trace the data is a big driver. And they, our customers, they like to have a unified way to manage the access of the data, okay? And that's a big driver. We see that a lot in the industry. We see that a lot in the banks um, and in administration as well too in, in that way. Right, and my final question to you is why is data virtualization vital for the West African market right now? Okay, uh, that's a good point. The, the trend we see in other region, you know, in, in Europe or in, um, in the US or in Asia uh, or, or similar in, in West Africa, uh, I think the, the challenge in, um, in uh, getting control, okay, again, to, to the access of the data is, is, is very important. And, um, and also to control where, you know, access of the data is really what we provide in a, much, in a very agile way. And um, it, it's a question of uh, authority. So you want to control uh, where I, I put my data. And for example, we, we have customers, they have data uh, in on-prem, for some of them, they have data in one cloud provider and they have data in another cloud provider, okay? Right. And they are virtualizing the, the access to the data so that if, I don't know, they have a vendor um, for cloud which is uh, from, from China, another one is from the US, um, maybe uh, they want to have this flexibility to decide, okay, um, tomorrow I may change off a cloud provider, okay? but I still have the control, I mean, uh, the, the access of the data, okay? So in terms of um, uh, uh, authority and uh, uh, for, for, for those company, and I guess especially in, in, in West Africa, it's, it's very crucial, okay? To, to really uh, have everything under control and not to depend too much on some, you know, uh, different vendors from, from uh, around the world, okay? Um, and 
obviously, you know, uh, in West Africa, finally, I mean, the, the trend on digitalization, and, and we see, we've seen that in the terrible, you know, uh, COVID uh, crisis that we're going through. Uh, data has never been, you know, so important. So uh, make the data available, especially during crisis, you know, uh, when things going down and then when things are coming up again, to have access to the data in real time is very critical more than ever okay and uh, that of course is applies very well uh, obviously to to the west africa organization right so with that we come to an end of this interview uh, thank you for your insights olivia i think it was great uh, having you with us and talking about data virtualization so thank you for taking the time out Thank you. Thank you for your time and your question. Thank you very so much. So if, if, if for our subscribers and for everyone who's watching the video right now, if you want to know more about data virtualization and how it can help solve your big data problems, please register for the Data and Analytics Virtual Summit West Africa on, happening on the 15th and 16th of July, where Olivia and his team will be presenting a customer case study. And with this, like I said, we come to an end of the interview. Thank you for joining us today, Olivia. I'm going to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.